Here at Naughty Dog, animation has always been really important to us and has been heavily focused on. And so we knew we wanted to raise the bar of what we're doing and what the industry has been doing as a whole. And one of those things is to really uh, allow the, the character in the game to show emotion. And so you'll really be able to see that he's showing fear, that he's intimidated, that he's confident or that he's insecure, that he's determined. And so all of that will come out and just really add a lot more life that wasn't there before in any game. We had three main goals uh, animating this character on this project. One of them was to achieve realistic movement with uh, a really good sense of weight. And the other is fluidity. We wanted him to smoothly go from, from move to move without popping from state to state, the way we see in a lot of other games. Um, and you put those two first goals together and you get really fluid animation. It looks really good, but it's really slow and unresponsive. So the third goal and the most important goal is to get responsiveness. One of the things that makes Drake so lifelike is the sheer volume of animations that we're doing on this game. We're doing about 10 times more than we've ever done in the past, which is huge. I mean, it's a huge step, 10 times the amount of animation. With the variety that we're adding, the layers that we're adding on top, to try to mask all that so you don't see the same thing, and you see a lot of organic nature of the character, and that really gives it this humanness. What makes this game truly next-gen has been the focus that we're doing on movement. Uh, in the next generation, what we've seen a lot of uh, great rendering, great shading, polygon counts are up higher, lighting's looking really good. So we've seen a lot of good looking games from a rendering perspective, and they all look really good from a still frame, but once you start to see them move, that's when they start to break down. The animation quality hasn't risen to that same level at this point. What we've found is that it's Drake's imperfections that make him believable. It's him stumbling, it's him not perfectly landing uh, correctly every time. And so one of the things that we wanted to do with him is make him a kind of an everyman put into an extraordinary situation. And we hope that comes across, uh, that he uh, doesn't do everything perfectly every time. PlayStation 3 really opened up the floodgates for us to uh, achieve the goals that we wanted to with the animation. We need much more CPU power than we've ever had before. Uh, and the amount of memory that we have to work with now just really allows us to have the quantity and, and quality that we need, uh, especially with the layers that we're doing and all the processes that are, that are going on right now. Uh, it just could not be done in any other way. And if we can do that, then we can tell more of the story during gameplay uh, while he's in the middle of action and while the player is actually going through the levels and going through the game. In the past, the line between cinematics and gameplay has been very clear. Uh, you play the game, and then you go into a storytelling moment, then you play the game again. Um, what we're trying to do with Uncharted is to blur that line a little bit more so that uh, you'll be playing the game along and things start happening around you as you're playing, so you're still interactive. A lot of the ways that we're able to tell the story is through the environment, through the other characters in the scene. Don't you guys usually just cut off a finger or something? Uh, we don't have to cut to a cutscene in order to deliver a line of dialogue or a story or, or things that we want to portray to kind of lead the character on and lead Drake and the, and the player on to the, the bigger story that's unveiling. So all that will happen while you're playing the game. <laughs>